Stephen in Chicago had a question for us. Welcome, Stephen. You're on with Seth and Matt. Um, hi, Matt. Hi, Seth. How are you? Doing well. Doing, Doing well. all right. Um, yeah, um, I was, uh, you know, born to New York, um, brought up Jewish, and uh, and my my parents were not, you know, I was brought up Reform, so we weren't really really Jewish, you know, like not really heavily religious, but uh, um, my, both my parents passed away. I have a ten year old son. And um, I thought, you know, before I actually just started watching your show about two weeks ago, and it kind of opened opened up my eyes a little bit. And I want to thank you for that. But um, um, you know, I, I thought it would be the right thing because my mom was from Israel, and she always said to, um, you know, respect you know the traditions of the Jewish people and what they've gone through and everything like that. And so you know, I just thought it would be good for my son to go to Jewish school and. And you know, get bar mitzvah and all the other stuff that you know a normal uh, Jewish person would do. But you know, watching your show and stuff, I started questioning whether that's really the right thing to do for my son. Uh, he's you know he's on the autism spectrum. He's high functioning, but he's you know. So it's, I don't even know. I don't even know if I can really ask him that kind of thing whether he gets anything out of it or not. But um, you know, I was just wondering what your thoughts are on. You know, sending your son, you know, sending your son, you know, he goes like, you know, twice a week on Sunday, he does, um, you know, just history, Jewish history, and, you know, learning about the Jewish people and stuff like that. On Wednesday, he goes to Hebrew school to learn Hebrew so that he can do the permits for thing. Um, so, I mean, it's not like it's like, it, I don't, I don't view it as much indoctrination as maybe like Orthodox or even conservative Jewish people or, or, you know, I don't know much about the Christian religion too much, so I don't know. I can't really um, what, say what, what, do you, what do you think, Seth? I mean, we've talked about this. You and I both talked about this from the standpoint of, like, Christianity quite often. I don't know how many times you've addressed it from with regard to Judaism. Well, I, I think that's what he's asked is part of the question. But in my mind, I'm asking another question, which tacks on to the end of it. What are we talking about when we say Jewish education? Because... More than half, statistically, more than half of practicing Jews, at least here in the United States, but I think it's actually worldwide, either doubt supernatural things or don't believe outright. Like they are secular Jews, certainly not Orthodox. Mm -hmm. And yeah, my, so I my, find. My dad, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. My, my, my dad was, you know, born in 1917, and he has a city's passed away. But, um, you know, he. He was probably a atheist before it was like even like one would admit that you were an atheist. I don't know. He always you know viewed science. He was a dentist. He he always taught me you know the scientific methods. I mean he he was a good influence on that. Um, and I'm he guessing though admit, that for him Judaism was it was like a cultural but, framework for his life. Right? He enjoyed the traditions. He enjoyed the history. He may have mm -hmm. enjoyed the music, the ritual of it. The window dressing of Judaism he enjoyed, despite the fact that he didn't really hold a God belief. Would that be accurate? It was more my mom. I don't, I don't think my dad, you know, just went along with her because, you know, as I said, my mom, my mom was from Israel, so um, he just, you know, accepted because he didn't really have any opinion one way or the other. Well, so I, did, you know, my, my mom wasn't really just really religious either. She just, again, she wanted to, um, you know, just you know, teach me about the Jewish history and you teach me a little bit Hebrew so I can do bar mitzvah and stuff like that. The, the difference between teaching someone about Jewish history and maybe using like, I'm in this weird space, Stephen, where I see the utility of religion in a few ways. I think that tradition, communal music, they don't even have, doesn't have to be called religious in exercise, but I understand the attraction. And so if somebody wants to be a secular Jew and they want to have the bar mitzvah and they want to enjoy the music and dress the dress and have the culture and the food and, and whatever, without all the supernatural backstory, I think tradition and ritual can provide much of the color for the human experience. The difference is, is we, we have to ask, is this merely a cultural exercise where he can get a good education, learning the history of the Jewish people as part of a comparative religions exercise, learning about all religions and none, or are they telling him what to think, teaching him to believe a literal Torah and 
getting into the superstitious aspect of it, because if they're telling him that, then they're really programming him as to what to think. So the question really for me is, is this sort of a tradition exercise? Is it window dressing? Is it a framework? Do you get to help inform that, to give context, to make sure that they're not being indoctrinated? Yeah. Or what's, what's going on in the school? I'm sorry, go ahead, Matt. No, I was just saying, yeah, I was I was adding on to that. Basically, what's going on? Because like we we all know Judaism comes in different flavors. And so Reformed Judaism doesn't even require a belief in a God. And I know a number of Reformed Judaism, Judas, Jews who um, practice it as more of like a cultural thing. There's also the Society for Humanistic Judaism, which I've met, I've been to, I've been to a temple of, of that. I would recommend that you talk to a rabbi that is associated with the Society for Humanistic Judaism and perhaps a reform rabbi to, to have them address how much, how important they think it is for you to get your son's education. I have no problem at all with somebody learning about religion, learning about many different religions. Certainly I have no problem with somebody learning other languages and history. So it's not a big deal unless the school is basically teaching the Jews are God's chosen people and there's this and this and this. And, you know, it, it, that if it is more closer to like conservative, orthodox, Hasidic teachings, then I don't think it's the same as what you'd get in humanistic Judaism or, or reform Judaism. And if anybody reaches for a live chicken, that's probably a good reason to turn <laughs> it because he brought up the chicken earlier. There's a tradition among Orthodox Jews where they transfer the sin in yeah. their heart to that of a live chicken. And then they take the chicken by the poor thing. They take the chicken and they flip it around over their head and say some incantation. And then they take a razor blade and they cut the head off the chicken. So they've now had blood atonement using the chicken. And then they give the chicken to poor people to eat. And I always had the question, if you give somebody a chicken that's full of evil and they eat it, do they then require a fresh chicken? To have, I'm sorry, I totally left the left the rails there, Matt. <laughs> it's, it's chicken inception. I'm sorry, I just thought that was just so. So I, I honestly, I would go deeper. Let's find out: is this a cultural exercise or is it a superstitious exercise? I think the takeaway, Stephen, right now, and and I'll turn this over to you, and you can tell us what you think. But I think the takeaway right now from both of us is that neither of us are opposed to people learning about anything uh, in an academic sense. And we certainly are both familiar with and understand why someone uh, would view Judaism from a cultural angle and want their child to, to know about that history. Uh, but it's not free of concerns. And I'd recommend, you know, like I did, talking with a, a reform rabbi and, and perhaps one that's associated with the Society for Humanistic Judaism. Um, yeah, I, 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 I believe it's mainly a... a um, a cultural thing. I don't think um, there's. I don't think they really push any specific agenda. You know. You know. As I said, it is a reform. Uh, uh, you know, synagogue. Uh, yeah. they, and they you're know, still there, the right? Old. You haven't handed. The, you're not. They're not parenting for you. So at the end of the day, you still get to provide context. You still get to sort of make sure that what they're getting is presented as part of a larger framework. Is you are teaching him what to think or how to think rather right. and not what to think. You know, you're, you, I think you have to be a participant. I, I wouldn't recommend handing him off and then you get him back later and go, well, I hope you did great. I think you need to be a participant in that process. That's a good, that's a good, uh, good thing to think about. I'll definitely, uh, try to be more involved. Uh, you know, it's, it's hard when I'm, I'm a, I'm a single parent, so it's a little bit harder for me to, I guess. to, uh, with a job and everything, but I'll, I'll definitely try to be more involved in his uh, upbringing with uh, the Jewish history. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Well, thanks a lot I for the call, Stephen. And by the way, you can feel free to call us back sometime. Let us know how it's going. And if you if you think you need other, you know, if, if maybe you're not comfortable going to a particular rabbi, if you think you need other help, we can always recommend recoveringfromreligion.org. And also, I, I recommend looking into Parenting Beyond Belief, which is um, something that we've been associated with for a, a number of years now. Uh, as a potential resource. I, it tends to be directed, not intentionally, but it tends to be directed in the United States towards Christians. But I think there's a lot of good resources and a lot of good people that you're going to find uh, along along those lines that, that'll that offer you their advice and what, what worked for them and what didn't work for them. Thank you, Stephen. All right, thank you. Thank you so much. Sure. Thank you. It's hard for me, Matt. You know, I'm a non-parent. Like, you yeah. know, I, I, I got stepkids, but I've never... But you know what? I was raised 
indoctrinated in private religious schools. And, you know, I feel like I can speak to how programming works in this sort of weird we reinforcement culture, this weird normal mm -hmm. that happens in a lot of religious schools. And if I had been given comparative religions information, if they had said, all right, not, not this is what they teach and it's true. This is what so-and-so teaches and it's false. But if they just laid them out side by side, all right, here's the yeah. deity, here's their holy book, here's their basic beliefs, here's their mission statement, here's how they started, here's their worshipers, here's their heaven, here's their hell. If they had done that religion by religion, I'll bet I would have become an atheist a whole lot sooner, you know? You'd think so, except that I took a comparative religions course just exactly like that in ninth grade. And I can genuinely remember sitting there going, wow, all these other people believe in really <laughs> weird shit. I'm glad that I was raised in the true religion. That's So that's what the indoctrination and the teaching does so that you don't see the problem with yourself and with, with, with what you believe there. You know, uh, that's how, that, if you see the sinner that Matt has become, then that's why he needs at least two chickens. Yes. Like you could not just have one chicken to atone for his sins. I'm yes. just saying. And that's why I go to Pluckers. <laughs>